representing the government uh, this morning, the Minister for uh, Social Care is uh, Helen Wakeley. Hi, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us on the programme. Very much appreciated. Um, has Nadeem Zahawi been unfairly treated? Well, the Prime Minister has followed the process that he said he was going to do. He appointed an independent ethics advisor, Sir Laurie Magnus. Sir Laurie reported back. The Prime Minister saw that report and on the basis of that, he made the decision that Nadeem Zahawi should be removed from his government. Yeah, but do you think he's been fairly treated? Well, no, I don't, because I think that process was exactly the right thing to do. The Prime Minister was under pressure to act more quickly, but he said no, he was going to follow a fair process. He did that. So Laurie really set out in some detail the reasons for uh, the, the, the judgment, the things that he saw that Nadeem Zahawi had uh, done wrong or had not done, and that was the basis on which the Prime Minister made his decision. That's when you get that. appointed, you get a phone call asking you a set of questions, which is your opportunity to say whether there's something that, that the Prime Minister ought to know before they appoint you. And also, as I say, you fill in your register of interest. These are the places where ministers declare things at the point of appointment. And Nadim Zahawi didn't. No, that was what was set out in the letter. But what I'm trying to get to the bottom of is, are you telling me that civil servants and the Cabinet Office's propriety and ethics team would not have alerted this Prime Minister? Minister to concerns about the financial affairs of Nadim Zahawi. Oh, what I'm saying is the Prime Minister didn't know about the things that then... Uh, her... So what I'm struggling to understand is, is that she was on the rounds, this, this uh, Helen Waitley, she was on the rounds this morning. She was obviously going to go on BBC and, uh, and maybe the uh, Good Morning Britain, whatever. I'm not quite sure. But I know she did here and LBC with Nick Ferrari. I don't know which one she did first, but I've watched both of them and they were as bad as each other. No, that's a lie actually. The one on Nick Ferrari was worse because he baited her in a trap asking her that uh, was uh, Nadine Zahari. Don't have a go at me for pronouncing that wrong. Uh, I, I, I struggle with it. But anyway, he asks whether Nick, uh, Richie Sunak was cor was right in sacking Nadim Sahari, and she said yes. And then with that, he turned around and said, "Well, why is Suella Braverman still in place? Because they both did the same thing. She got sacked by Liz Trust and then reinstated by Richie Sunak. So they should either both be in in a job." or they should both be out and she just fumbled her way for it and then she didn't even reply to it because she really got blindsided on that but she didn't get blindsided on the rest of the questions because she knew roughly what they were going to be she knew she wanted to go, go on and talk about other stuff but she knows that they're going to be questioned her first before anything about this the the, the current topic and she got blindsided and I was like, well, how could, I can imagine, I can see that you get blindsided on one, but then to get blindsided again. And what I mean by blind, blindsided, it was like these questions, she was just like fumbling. It was like, oh, I don't know what to say. Here. Let me just talk waffle. A bit like what I'm doing here. But anyway, yeah, I was just completely thrown that you could be so bad in two interviews. I mean, it takes skill to be that bad. It takes time, it takes effort, and it takes stupidity. And she has plenty of that. But, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Here's the rest of the vid video clip. Come out and set out about it. Well, this is the process, and that's, you know, this is, as I said, the process which, general, means that ministers have declared all, all their interests and the things that should be known. It's really important to make sure that there should be no conflicts of interest or actual perceived conflicts of interest. These are things that you know as a minister taking on the important but responsibility. But civil in the Cabinet Office are saying, whoa, you need to look at this guy's finances, and that isn't passed on to this present Prime Minister. I'm not going to give you a different answer from what I just said because what I've explained is what the Prime Minister uh, knew and as I said it was set out in the report yesterday that was why the Prime Minister made the decision uh, that Nadeem Zahawi had to be removed from government. Okay the Lib Dems feel his transgressions are so heinous he should have the whip removed why are they wrong? 
Well, as, um, he's, he's been fired from government. You know, this is a very serious consequence because he didn't comply with the ministerial code. Um, but he was still elected to be a member of parliament. Now, we can spend, we can talk about this more. I will just say that I've come here to talk about something that I know we'll that people we'll really care about. I do the interview. Which is about you the answer NHS. the questions. Yes, if you of course. Don't mind. Very so here we go. Sure that this we is what my viewers that. want to know about, and mm -hmm. I'll ask the questions in the order that I see fit, if you don't mind. Um, why should he not have the whip removed? Do you, are you happy with him still being a Conservative? I'm happy with the decision that the Prime Minister has made. So you're happy with him still being a Conservative and, and still representing the Conservative Party from the backbenches? As I said, and he was elected to be a Conservative Member of Parliament. I do think, no, clearly, uh, as set out by the Independence Ethics Advisor, it was very serious uh, what he had or, in fact, hadn't set out. But I also have worked alongside him in the Department of Health during the pandemic. I know what a fantastic job he did driving the progress with the vaccination, driving the vaccination, so that we got millions of people vaccinated in this country from COVID, head of many, many other countries. And that's something I'm really grateful to him for making that happen. OK, Deputy PM is uh, next in the firing line. Um, he has something like 24 civil servants who've claimed, um, made formal complaints against him for bullying. How can the PM avoid this becoming another disastrous set of headlines for him in the papers? Well, the PM is determined to make sure that there is integrity, accountability and professionalism in his government. That's why when things like this, when complaints are made, there is a fair and due process followed. So that is being followed in this circumstance with the Deputy Prime Minister, as it has been with Nadeem Zahawi. The Prime Minister got the report for Nadeem Zahawi's behaviour and made a very rapid and decisive decision to remove him from government. Meanwhile, I would say ministers like me, are we getting on with a really important job of working on people's priorities? I am here to talk about the and NHS. And I will talk about that and the in thing the that fullness really of time. I have eight minutes with you and I, okay. as I said, I'll decide how we uh, conduct this interview, if you don't mind. Um, are you not concerned that the Prime Minister could find himself in the same position with um, the Deputy Prime Minister as he has with his former chairman? I'm not going to prejudge the outcome of uh, the investigation that's going on. I'm sure the Prime Minister will make the right decision when that reports back. OK, Tom.